Hello everyone, I'm a jet lagged mess. Hello everyone, I'm so tired, I could just die. Hello everyone, I'm Heather. Today, I think we should talk about Australia. Okay, um, I went there for 10 days and I'm back. And I feel like I have some things to discuss, okay? Namely books, books I read while I was there, okay? Books I bought while I was there. Um, and so I'll go from there, but I think first, should we do that really annoying thing where, like, in the 1960s, parents would, like, sit everyone down, like, family members and stuff, and, like, show them, like, a slide reel of their time, you know, and, like, give them a commentary, like, oh, here's Dave, here's Dave on the beach, say hi, Dave, and, like, you know, like, should we do that for my trip to Australia right now? Because I think we should, okay? I'm gonna sit you down and, like, hold your eyes open like this, like, uh, in Clockwork Orange and, like, force you to watch my Australia trip while I give, like, really cheesy commentary. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm gonna do it from bed. I'm not leaving, okay? Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna start at Cardiff Central Station with a buttload of train anxiety because the trains don't work right. And we're gonna chat a bit of backstory about Australia, okay? So... I'm going there only for 10 days. I'm going with my friend Kathy, who I've known since I was 13 years old in school, okay? She is the girlfriend of this guy who's in a punk band. And she always goes on tour with them when they go on tour. They love her on tour. They think she's funny. She's like a bit of a mom type. She always thinks of things they need. You know, she's there for emotional support. She brings some beers. They're fully cool with her going on tour and she's happy to go with them. But the last tour they did, right, this crazy girlfriend came. It was like another girlfriend of another person in the band and she was well crazy. So they were like, okay, she can't come anymore. But instead of just saying, you know, you specifically cannot bring your girlfriend, they had to sort of put a blanket ban on girlfriends on the tour. So Kathy, she's super upset. She's like, I was looking forward to it. They're going all the way to Australia. It's a whole month. It includes the point of our anniversary. So I'm not going to see him for a whole month. I'm not going to see him on our anniversary. I really wanted to go. I'm upset. So cut to us like at my parents' dinner table on New Year's Eve, drunk as fook. Okay. Hatch on this plan. We're going to go on a road trip and we're going to basically follow behind the band at a distance, okay? And we're just gonna end up at their shows sometimes, is basically the plan. Okay, I'm already rambling and falling behind. Um, the last pictures there were of Singapore because that's where we refueled. And now we're looking at the Great Merino or the Big Merino. Like Australia apparently is full of massive shit, you know, like normal shit, but huge, like roadside attraction type things. There was this map in the museum that we saw that had all of them and there's like 30 of them, like a massive banana and like, you know, just stuff. This is the massive merino shape. We got gas and a postcard. It was wild. <coughs> okay, the first leg of the trip, Sydney to Melbourne, is really fucking far. So we had to stop somewhere along the way. And we stopped in this place called Beechworth that has this haunted asylum. We definitely did a ghost tour there because why would you not do a ghost tour there? Um, but it actually wasn't super scary. Like the nurse lady who did the tour was actually really lovely. And she was like, please remember that these people had care in mind. They just didn't have as advanced medicine. Um, but my favorite part was this book exchange, which was basically all horror books because obviously anyone going there loves horror. <coughs> I think the biggest shock was that Beechworth, the town, was actually super lovely and just amazing. And it looked exactly like Durango, Colorado, but just on the other side of the fucking world. And I texted my husband. I was like, James, this is exactly like Durango, Colorado. And he was like, to be fair, it was the same kind of frontier situation for the same kinds of Europeans, which isn't ideal, but I guess I can see the similarities. <coughs> okay, this was my first ever time being with the band. Okay, I'm in their green room here. This is their, like, special behind-the-scenes room. And here I am carrying beer. Kathy's like, this is how they know you're with the band. Because I'm fucking with the band, bitches. This is the first time I met, like, all the other people in the band as well. Like, I obviously knew Matt, which is Kathy's boyfriend, but I didn't know anyone else is in the band. And apparently Mark, who's the lead singer, he was famous in the 90s and was sort of, like, famously thrown off the warp tour by acting worse than your average punk guy which is sort of saying something anyway here i am on the side of the stage like i'm a fucking gangster okay i have never felt more cool in my whole fucking life than standing on the side of the stage in the vip section while they rock out should we drop an ear in do you like punk music <laughs> So 
sorry, just kidding. I won't do that again. Okay, we need to discuss these ramen places that they have in Australia, which is like you just basically go through and there's a whole fridge full of stuff and you just put whatever crap you want in a bowl and they make ramen for you. Like, we'll discuss it later, okay? Uh, this is just like a weird vagina looking roll thing, which was weird but lovely. Um, and this is like a big, this is just basically a, a collection of things I ate in Australia, which were weird. <laughs> Okay, this is the first of the three things I would say were my favorite moments of the trip. And it's going to see this massive fucking bat colony just outside Melbourne. So my friend Kathy, she's obsessed with bats. She did like a study abroad in Costa Rica for a bit um, where she just studied bats and hung out with them. And she's always really loved them. So she was like, okay, we should go and see this bat colony. It's like twenty to 30,000 bats living together just outside Melbourne. So we drove our like hoopty rental car there and like brought a picnic or whatever with like these vegan burgers and some wine. And we just like we're going to go and like look at the bats. And I thought we were just going to see a bunch of bats from really far away. And it turned out you could just basically come upon them just hanging out in trees, literally like a yard in front of your face, like above you, just hanging out. And they were super fucking cute. They were so cute. They're like little dogs with wings, bro. Like um, they're sort of waking up. It was when we went there. We went at the time when they're sort of like waking up into the world and getting hungry and like flying off and everything and they were just sort of like people waking up and like scratching themselves and like fighting with their brothers you know like they'd have like a bit of a scrap and then like another bit of a scratch and then go back sleep for a bit like they weren't ready you know and they'd uh there was like this one that was just sort of like hanging sideways thinking about it you know like should i get up don't want to get up but i'm so hungry like just sort of thinking and as sort of bites are bats are flying off into the distance some of them just stay there they haven't moved they're just like the late risers bro they're like my people it was so cute i love bats so much uh and this is just a little bit of old south wales meets new south wales for dawithon i know melbourne is in victoria but we did go to sydney after so like it still counts uh, and this is the market in Melbourne, quite like Cardiff Market, I would say, but like on steroids, like massive. Got a bit of bread, got a bit of dips, got a bit of veg. We made ourselves some pasta after. Um, I also got some super cheap Australian souvenirs, like some koala teddies for Anwan. She's a wild chef. She loves those and they were super cheap. So, <sighs> square. This is the part of the market I went to secretly when I was supposed to be looking for sunglasses really quick. Like um, we had to get... Uh, to Canberra for a time because Matt needed to get there and get set up with his bands and everything um, and I was like shit I need sunglasses I ran and I got super distracted super fast by this book stall like has anyone read the Jaguar okay because this is like a massive thing in Australia I think at the minute and it just looks grim has anyone read it like I also thought about getting this south of the sun thing which looks really nice has anyone read that one I also took pictures of things I want to get for later Peter and the Wolf vlog super cute cool. anyway Okay, we've got another badass VIP green room situation coming up here. Like, I'll never get tired of it. Like, I need to make my husband join a band so that this can be our life all the time. This is the midweek punk rock Canberra crowd. Like, they didn't think that this show was going to have enough people at it, but it definitely does. So, Canberra, you know, maybe it's badass. You don't know. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you listen to them again. <laughs> okay. This was number two of my three favorite things on the whole fucking trip, okay? And it was this, like, nature reserve type thing. This, like, wildlife center just off the highway that my friend, my friend found. And they had fucking koalas, man. Oh, my God. I love koalas so much. They had koalas super close to you. You could see them super close up, okay? And kangaroos that you could feed and pet, okay? And a load of of other super weird animals you don't normally see just in the northern hemisphere hanging out okay wombats this like weird bird thing i can't remember the name of but it looks like a pure dinosaur okay it's like an emu meets a turkey um like they had the blue penguins the little ones that queak at you when it's time to be fed you know not like the regular arctic ones oh my god it was just the best the best day i can't even tell you guys can we just watch can we just have a chill out and just watch this koala footage because it's just so amazing okay this was my very first experience being close to anything kangaroo like in my whole life 
and it's on my bucket list of things that I needed to happen before I could die. Okay, like I know these are officially wallabies and not kangaroos, but like to me, they're basically kangaroos and this has changed my life, okay? Look at how fucking cute they are, okay? Watch, watch, I'm gonna feed this shit. I'm gonna fucking feed this shit. Look, it just comes up. Oh, it just has a nipple. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, and because we went there midweek, right? And we went there sort of near closing time. Like we just made it basically before it closed. And because it was pissing rain, we were the only ones there, bro. It was just us. It was just me and Kathy and the wallabies. And it was the most beautiful day of my life. It's Heather, the kangaroo whisperer. Okay, we finished our trip in Sydney. Um, this is where I'm trying to teach Kathy to put the tongue at the top of your mouth to stop the double chins. Didn't really work out. Okay, this is what I was on about with the ramen. Okay, so it's just a massive fridge, right? Full of weird as fuck, poorly labeled foods. And you just put loads of weird stuff in a bowl, whatever you want. You give it to the guy and he makes ramen for you. And if you're a noob, you accidentally put too much in the bowl and he has to make a massive bowl of ramen instead of a normal one. Uh, hands up, show of hands, who thought I was not going to force my friend to go to gay bars? Anyone? Anyone. Okay, nobody. You know me well. Okay, our adventures in Sydney Chinatown started out super cheap and amazing, with my friend trying to get these Emperor Puff Cream Puff things for 60 cents, but quickly turned dangerously expensive when I found this Japanese bookstore, which I should not have gone in. Okay, I knew I didn't have any money, I didn't have any in my case. I should not have come in here, okay? They not only have books, loads of books that I would get anywhere, but they had this whole massive section just on Australian literature, which is basically what I was looking for. I was looking for Australian books I couldn't get at home, uh, like so much so to the point where I was like overcome with decision and couldn't decide and had to just leave and didn't really get any. <sighs> But I did find this amazing thing. Like, my kid watches a show called Little Lunch at home. It's about, like, this Australian recess. You know, like, all these kids at recess at school. And it's a book series! So I had to get her those. But I also had to get these other things. I had to get them. It was very important. It's like a Japanese notebook and some books. I also took a picture of these books here that I wanted to get but didn't have room for or money for. So I just took a picture of them and maybe, hopefully, I can find them at home. Okay, this is my third and final favorite moment of the trip. I've never felt in my life like such a motherfucking gangster than I felt walking down this ramp in front of all of these people with the band holding beer, with my like VIP lanyard like flapping in the breeze. All these people that paid all this money to be on this boat for this concert. I walked in front of them with the band and now we're in the green room. Like, am I mofo? Okay, I am. That's right. Like, this boat concert thing, in essence, is, like, a tour around Sydney Harbour with, like, multiple levels of, like, punk concert. So, there's, like, one punk band playing on the top floor, and then one on the middle floor, and then one on the bottom floor, like, over time, like, over a couple hours of this show. But as it's going around, it's, like, sunset in Sydney Harbour, so you can just, like, listen to a bit of punk music, whatever, and just, like, watch the gorgeousness of, like, Sydney Opera House and, like, the bridge and just, like, the sunset Ugh, it was just fucking amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. And like really surreal as well. Like as someone who's never been to the Southern Hemisphere before, it's a bit mind blowing. Also for anyone who's ever wondered what it would be like to be in a mosh pit below decks on a boat and or crowd surf, feast your eyes, you know, this is how. Uh, it was all fun and games for the night until like at a certain point when everything just started to smell of punk farts. And there was no escaping it. Like, any deck you went to, it just smelled like man butt. So I just took my head out the window, out like a hatch. And I found, like, the most beautiful night skyline. And, like, fireworks. I don't know whether they were celebrating or anything, but it was absolutely gorgeous. And just way surreal. Just beautiful. Okay, this is the end. It was the end of the night. End of the Australia trip. This is literally our last night in Australia. Um, it ended with a kebab, as all good nights should, especially ones on the other side of the motherfucking world. Um, and now, I feel like we should talk about books. Should we talk about books now? I bought this book in the airport in Australia. Like, let's get to the nitty gritty. Okay, shall we quickly talk about books? Okay, um, first of all, the books I read while I was there. Like, I didn't bring loads of books with me, because I was like, 
I'm not going to have loads of time to read and also I want to buy books, right? So I brought a couple with me and I ended up leaving most of them in like hostels and like at the airport and stuff, okay. Um, but the first one, Dowithon, okay, I read two Dowithon books and one like horror type book. Uh, the first Dowithon one was The White Trail by Fleur Davies and that's one of the ones where it's based on an old story in the Mabinogion, it's like a King Arthur story um, called How Kill Huch One Old One. Um, and it shows you the story at the back. It like gives you a, like a rundown of the actual old story so that you can make parallels throughout the new story, you know, if you want to without knowing the story originally. Um, the idea is it's like a modern take on this old like medieval story. And it's this guy whose wife, <clears throat> his pregnant wife went missing in the grocery store. Um, and he's agonized and he's trying to find her and his cousin, Arthur, um, is like this low rate, like bin off, P.I. and he's like trying to help him find her but he's like not doing very good because he's shit okay um but it does turn out that he has like some sort of instinct some sort of like preternatural or sort of like um I don't know magical sort of ability to sense some things out even though he's like basically shit as a P.I. um and the guy the dad whose wife and baby are gone now um, he sort of moves on with his life, he tries to kill himself, um, and in the end he accidentally kills another guy when he's like trying to kill himself on a cliff and like he accidentally throws this guy off and then takes that guy's life. You know, he like goes and he finds his wife and kid and he just like takes them over. <laughs> anyway, it like follows the story and I thought it was really good. Like I think these Mabinogion like series don't get amazing reviews and people aren't really into them and for some reason I just fucking love them. I think they're amazing. Also Flea Davith, I love her as an author. Um, loads of the books she's read I've really enjoyed. Um, so I give that four stars. <laughs> um, then, and I left that in a hostel in Sydney so hopefully I can spread the magic. Um, then I read The Merringer and other stories by John Gower and I also really liked that one but again I don't know if it would have like wide appeal is so John Gower I like him I like him as an author um but the stories weren't Wales focused really like loads of the stories were people who come from Wales you know in the world or doing whatever um there's this one story where it's these two guys from Wales and they like do danger tourism <laughs> like they go to these places that are really dangerous um like war zones and you know crap like that just because they're into it I mean um and that was like sort of weird but also sort of interesting and like it was about like brotherly love like underneath everything and I really enjoyed that. Um, so the writing and the stories themselves really liked but I think, I don't know, maybe short stories in general like aren't really my thing. Like I find that whenever I like a book that's short stories it's in Dewithon and it's like a Welsh short story thing when I don't normally like short stories. Um, I haven't decided on the star rating for that one yet. I think maybe three, four? Three stars, four stars, like in between. It was okay. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're into short stories, you might give that one a go because I didn't do it. Like there was also this one about a pub with like an alternate dimension where people can like go back in time and it was weird and it was like hard to follow by. I like I liked the vibe of it. Um anyway. Okay, and then the last one was Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. So this was a hover book. It wasn't anything to do with Wales or anything like that. Um and loads of people slated this one as well. They were like, oh my God, it's boring. Like the, you know, the stuff behind it, oh, this, the twist, you know, it ended up being stupid. Again, like, I don't know what it is. Like maybe I was on holiday, so I was already in a good mood. Everything I read was going to be amazing. Or like maybe I was just trapped on a plane. And like when you're trapped on a plane, you're like, please take me away from this, you know, so you immerse yourself all the way. Like, I don't know what the deal was, but I fully enjoyed that. I gave that four stars. So basically the idea is it's this girl and she lives like, in the middle of nowhere on this ranch um and she has like all these rules that her dad put into place she's like in her 30s now or whatever but she grew up with these really intense rules her dad was like we never watch television we never listen to the radio we never leave we never contact anyone we don't have facebook blah blah um and the girl herself can't remember anything about before she was eight years old she only remembers like being eight years old and like, coming to this ranch she's got amnesia about like her childhood um so the dad dies and she like breaks his rule and goes on Facebook and lets everyone know that he's died you know so they can like come to his funeral or whatever and um these two guys come as well 
and they're like I can't believe we found you we've been looking everywhere for you like we were part of the circle and you just disappeared blah blah and she's like what do you mean and they have to explain that they were all of them like these six people on a kids tv show together called like Mr. Magic um and something happened to where the studio caught on fire and everyone had to leave but they really want to do a reunion and get everyone together and she's like I don't want to be in a reunion for this blah blah and they're like okay fine like you do you but um aren't you going to tell your mom that you're alive and she's like what do you mean my mom she like didn't know that her mom's still alive and around she's like oh my god I have to go meet my mom like maybe she doesn't know that I don't remember her blah blah, blah. so she goes with them to this like town in the middle of nowhere where they film this kids show so she can have a reunion with all the kids and meet her mom um and like there's a twist to it right like you can tell that there's something creepy going on like there's something you know I don't know like magical or just like horror like going on in the background um, and I don't want to give it away but it's like to do with the show and like the entity that runs the show is Mr. Magic and the children that go on the show like oh, loads of people on like reddit or whatever they were like dumb like oh i've seen that trope before oh i saw that co-. like but like uh, honestly i didn't really see it coming like i thought it was good and weird and like built creepiness because like she she doesn't remember like this sort of like amnesia thing is set to like build suspense doesn't it and it does they're like oh it's just to build suspense like well fine it does bro like <laughs> i was fully suspended thank you um anyway four stars on that one now books i bought in australia i wanted to buy loads of australian books but then i ended up at this bookstore that had loads of australian books and i couldn't decide and my friend was like waiting and i just panicked and i didn't get anything i just took loads of pictures of everything thinking can i get this at home and if i can't i don't know what i'm gonna do do you know what i mean um but then i did buy some books but not loads okay so first one i bought at the haunted asylum okay it's about the asylum it's just like the actual history of it um so it's got like pictures and stuff like it's just like one of these like tours and things but i feel like it's going to be super interesting because the lady was like talking about the history of the place and you know i think the main idea was that she was going to do ghosts and be like scary and stuff like that but she didn't do loads of history and i think the history would be super interesting so i'm gonna do that did you hear my husband burping in the background just then like i swear to god it's like feeding time with the zoo in this house like can we have some manners please <sighs> okay and then for my kid obviously i got this like little lunch book it's like a whole book series just super super into that show it's like basically okay so like in australia they have lunch time but it's like mixed with play time so i think like you know in america that would just be called like recess like you'd have lunch and then you go have recess but like i guess in australia they have lunch and recess together like they eat outside i know anyway it basically reminded me of this show when i was a kid it was like a cartoon show called recess and just every episode was like them going out for recess for 20 minutes and it was a bit like that um but it's like weirdly australian and i love it and my kid loved it as well so i got her that okay also like on a display table for cheap they had kiki's delivery service like the actual book of it i've not read the book um and my kid i don't think has watched the movie i don't think she's watched any of like the studio ghibli type movies so it sort of reminded me that it's time She's nine years old now like she'll fully appreciate all these movies so i need to like i think we're gonna read this together the actual book i'm not ready for and then watch like loads of the movies because they're fucking amazing and she'll love them do you know what i mean like it's time okay the one properly australian book that i did buy okay it took me ages to decide i couldn't decide for shit okay finally i made a last minute choice in the airport in sydney i was like finally okay i know what i want is this one it's boy swallows universe by trent dalton it's also apparently a netflix show I don't know if it's like Australian Netflix or British Netflix or American Netflix. I don't know. I'll have to see. Um, but it's a pretty big one. I was thinking traveling. Okay. You want to make sure it's got some heft. You don't want to, you know, be cut short with a tiny book. So I was like, I think I'm ready. And I've seen it a couple times throughout the trip. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It's so big. I don't know how I feel about it. Okay. But now I feel like I'm getting good vibes. And I feel like I need to read you back just partially. Okay. Because it sounds wild. Has anyone read this? Can you talk me through it? Okay, Brisbane, 1985. First of all, awesome. Okay, I love a book in the 80s. A lost father, a mute brother, a junkie mim, a heroin dealer for a stepfather, and a notorious crim for a babysitter. It's not as if Eli Bell's life isn't complicated enough already. He's just trying to follow his heart and understand what it means to be a good man. But fate keeps throwing obstacles in his way, not the least of which is Titus Braw's legendary Brisbane drug dealer. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> 
<laughs> but now Eli's life is going to get a whole lot more serious. He's about to meet the father he doesn't remember, break into Boggo Road Jail on Christmas Day to rescue his men, come face to face with the criminals who tore his world apart and fall in love with the girl of his dreams. Like, I feel like, can someone talk to me about this? Australian, booktube friends, anyone who's read this? Can we talk? Because I feel like it's going to be really good. I don't know. Also, just on a side note, in that bookstore, it was, like, also a Japanese stationery store. I love Japanese stationery. Okay, I got this, like, Japanese, like, notebook thing. Like, I just love Japanese stationery. Okay, I'm sorry. That's it. Okay, I have to go. Um, thank you for watching, if you got this far. Thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, questions, anything, Australia trip, you know, thoughts. Have you been to Australia? Do you live in Australia? The things I didn't see that I need to see next time, you know, because got to go back. I only saw a part of the country. Um, you know, Australia books as well. Uh, things I should look for, you know, in the future. Um, please let me know and I will see you soon. Okay. Mwah.